So I'm going to tell you a little bit about us and who we are. TechSoup is a nonprofit organization that has been around since 1987, although we became TechSoup as we are known now in 2000. A trusted partner for more than three decades, the TechSoup Global Network equips nonprofits with the transformative technology products, knowledge, and services they need to build a more equitable world. From discounted technology products and services to articles, webinars, and courses, and more, we deliver the training and tools nonprofits need to be better, stronger, faster, and powered up to transform their communities. So together with our partners, we have 236 partners around the world. We're in 39 languages. We've reached over 1.3 million organizations, and we've delivered more than $1.6 billion in technology, tools, and philanthropic services to date. And we have a TechSoup global network in, as I mentioned, over 236 countries. And today we are kicking off our new event series, which will be happening every other week called Feed More Tech Talks. And we're opening this series with our guest expert, Allison Reese. The Feed More Tech Talk series um, will be, as I mentioned, every other week. And it's TechSoup's open town hall forum for people who feed people. And this week's featured guest is Allison Reese, Executive Director for the Super Bowl of Caring and the Tackle Hunger Movement, which is a nationwide food drive campaign that brings together thousands of groups annually who collectively donate millions to local hunger relief charities each year. The Tackle Hunger Map was built to support their mission to unite all communities to tackle hunger and show where and what food charities need in real time. We will learn more about the map and how it's being used while I speak with Allison. And today we also want to hear how we can help you, how TechSoup can help support the important work done by organizations like yours who feed people. We'll introduce you to Quad after I speak with Allison and our member services manager, Aaron, will be taking the mic after me and we'll be telling you all about Quad. And Quad is our new peer-to-peer -peer community and content hub where you can connect with others just like you who are working to address food security issues. And with that, I'm gonna introduce you to Allison, currently uh, does, uh, serves as the executive director for the Super Bowl of Caring and the Tackle Hunger Movement, which is a nationwide food drive campaign that brings together thousands of groups annually who collectively donate millions to local hunger relief, local hunger relief charities each year. An educator by training and in the classroom and school leadership for over 23 years, Allison knows firsthand that we must make sure our families get the food they need so that they can meet their potential. And she can be reached at allison at superbowl.org. And that's A-L-I-S-O-N at S-O-U-P-E-R-B-O-W-L dot org. So with that, Allison, it's great to meet you. And where are you, where are you sitting right now? I am sitting in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas. Nice. So I'm going to start asking you questions about the Tackle Hunger Movement and Map. So why don't we start with what is the Tackle Hunger Map and how does it work? I appreciate the opportunity uh, to talk to some of the food charities that you all work with. And of course, we have had all sorts of great experiences with TechSoup and they have helped us build our Tackle Hunger Map. So let me tell you about it. It was built to show where local food charities are working to feed people and what their current status is regarding their ability to meet the demands of neighbors who were in need in real time. So that, what that means is that when a user goes to the map, they automatically find the food charities nearest their geolocation. They can see the status, that is whether they need non-perishables, whether they need perishables, whether they have adequate stock, or whether they're in critical need and might be turning away clients. And people can donate directly to that charity right through the map. Charities have the option to either get donations directed right to their bank account, and that's for free, or they can have the donations run through us and we send the donations in a check within 30 days. And how is the data in the Tackle Hunger Map addressing other, other challenges? How, how is our other organizations using the data? Is anyone else using it? And is it open? So interestingly enough, it, it really fits very well within our mission to unite all communities to tackle hunger. And to, for our participants in Super Bowl occurring events and collections to be able to have a 
an online resource in order for donations to flow to those charities. But in addition, the reason we started this was actually because of the fact that we had a question that came to us. So at that time, the question was, hey, can you tell us in real time what's going on in, with food charities? And this was during the pandemic. So because of that, we created this map and we're adding charities all the time. When we, and anyone can add a food charity to the map. And when they do, we have a, a charity a director who verifies that charity, make sure that it's really a charity and, and then approves it to the map. So when food charities provide their status of their current level of need, that allows a user, whether it's the Department of Defense who originally had the question for us, or a local person in our community, or a church person, or just a, a regular person interested, we can see, we can do several things with that data. First, we can direct people who are hungry to places that, that can actually serve them. Because we know if a charity is on red, then we would caution a, a client may end up being turned away. And that's happening more often than not sometimes. And our charities don't want that. But that is indeed sometimes what ends up happening. So we can direct people to other charities within that area. We can also encourage community members to pay attention to the map and become support networks to the food charities, especially when they're on red status, when there's a critical need. And another thing that we're doing with this data is in the event of emergencies, this map can actually be used by emergency officials. And it has been used and continues to be used by Northern Command to find uh, resources to help, but also to find partner pantries who might be able to help distribute emergency resources. And one last thing that I can think of is that our food charity data now is interestingly being layered with other data so that we can really tell the story that helps federal resources or state resources actually do better. So historical data of where and what food charities need at different times of the year can really lead to better resources across the board for all food charities. So bottom line, who's using it now? It's called the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center at the Department of Defense. We've got local officials in some communities around the country who are starting to use it to make sure that when social workers are sending people to food charities, they're sending them to places that can actually serve them well. And then we've also got a, a couple colleges now that are working on some research there where they're actually building an algorithm to determine where to stage food in the event of an emergency, whether it's a pandemic emergency or a natural disaster. And of course, the data that we've built or that we're building is critical to that. Very interesting. And what are some of the biggest challenges for the small food banks uh, that participate in the Tackle Hunger Map? Yeah, it's particularly hard. What we hear, and just like the forum that you're building, it's particularly hard for small charities to have time to get awareness to the work that they're doing. So mm -hmm. literally, I can be sitting a mile away from a food charity and have no idea that's happening. And a lot of times that's true with our faith-based organizations. They, they don't know that there's a charity right down the street. And if they did know that, then potentially they could be more supportive. And because our charities just have, don't have time to go to, to these potential partners and seek help, only the volunteers and faith-based orgs that walk in the doors end up being able to help. So in addition, Look, our food charities, you guys know, you're constantly battling to find the resources you need to do your work. So we envision the map to be a quick and easy place that charities can indicate their need. Literally, all it is, you get an occasional email where you click a button in that email. You don't even have to log in to the back end of that map. It automatically changes your color. And food charities, obviously, you feel very isolated, which is some of the data that, that you all have collected from talking to some of these charities. So our map provides this network. Look, if a charity is doing okay, and I notice, and, and I'm that charity, and I see a food charity 10 miles away from me on red, I could call and see if I could help. Because we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. We have no way to see where the pain points are in the system at any given moment. And that's what the Tackle Hunger Map can really do and solve for and help with. Yeah, I, we, in, in our quad community, what we're going to tell you about, we were talking about how, what happens when a 
pantry closes and how they manage those challenges. So I could imagine this being a pretty useful tool in that instance. Could you share a story about a food bank or pantry that benefited from your map? For sure. And on that note, we envision, hopefully, having the ability for charities who are in the map, in the map to be able to say, okay, we're closing, we're either closing for a short time or we're closing you know, permanently, and that really flagging that location. And then the other charities that would be around it would then automatically be on red because now all of a sudden they're serving more. That's just something that we're thinking about for the future, but certainly that's something that we're all having to contend with the increase in the ability to try to function as a food charity. So one of the, I got two really good stories. One of them is just a local charity to where I live. They were in our first set of data and our first set of data came from all of the food charities who had benefited in some way from a Super Bowl and caring campaign at some time in the last 20 years. And we had about 12,000 of them. They were in particular need. And so the pin was changed. She changed her pin to red. And then she emailed a couple of the local civic groups that she had met and who expressed an interest in her pantry because of the map. And within 30 minutes of that email and that pin changing, a partner, a, a civic group called and said, hey, what is it you need? The charity described that specific need and it was for their Thanksgiving giveaways last year. And within 30 minutes, that need was filled. So it was the ability for her to make connections that allowed her to build some support network that both the map and the community can fulfill. Another great story, this is a really good one. We were doing a phone bank with Nextstar Media for New Year's Eve, we do that on the West Coast with several channels on the West Coast to all, I think, seven or eight different states. At any rate, we had youth answering the phones and the callers were asked what their zip codes were. The kids would enter that zip code into the map and tell the caller, here's your nearest food pantry. One uh, particular caller called in and said, we want to donate $25,000 to this, do this charity in the map. That charity didn't do anything but exist on our map to get that donation. So it's pretty cool. That is, so that, that kind of actually answers my next question. And then we'll move over to Aaron, which is why should organizations participate? Why should they join? And that, what your, your second story after that, if you have anything else you want to add before we pass it over to Aaron. And just to let the audience know, we'll be addressing all of these questions. I see some great questions coming up in the chat and a lot of the same questions I'm actually thinking. And um, so I, we'll be addressing all of those after, um, including the questions for, for Aaron. So we'll address all the Q&A at the end. But so just to wrap, Allison, what, any, anything final that you want to say about why organizations should participate? Yeah, absolutely. I think charities, just like we're talking about with Quad, they need and want better awareness of the work they're doing. It's really tough work and very isolating. So we're trying to reveal that food charity network better to get support for all charities, whether it's big, small, part of a food bank network or totally independent. We know, need to know where the holes in the system is and where there's vulnerabilities. Think about this. There's places where they're considered food deserts with potentially high rates of poverty and you have one church that's feeding people and they're doing it independently and they're doing it with volunteers. If we know where these situations are occurring, we can and should do better at supporting those communities. Another reason, it doesn't cost anything. And even when a donation rolls through our map, just full disclosure, the map fee is a very small 3.5%, which barely covers our technology costs, mm -hmm. even with TechSoup's help. So the only fee that happens is when a donation rolls through us, and then we either send you a check or we're connecting it through through the back end of our map. So one last reason, we really have a vast network of groups who participate in, in tackle hunger collections each year. And if a person or a group hosts a campaign for your charity, they can both hold in-person donations and link it to the map to collect monetary donations for your charity through a new tackle hunger pro portal for participation. Think of it like a GoFundMe page sort of thing. And that new system is in the process of going up on our website right now, literally right now. So the group can manually report their in-person totals if they had a food collection for your charity. 
to the national tackle hunger impact and share everything else really easily through the map. And it's really easy to add, just by the way, your charity, if you're not on the map, you just go to our map at map.tacklehunger.org. And there's a little button at the top that says contact. And when you click that, you'll see a place where you can add a food charity right there. So we would love to have you and certainly email me. I'm, I'm always glad to help. Thank you so much. Super interesting stuff. And we will be addressing all of these um, questions. There's so many in the chat at the end. And with that, I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Aaron. Thanks, Susan. Hi, everybody. I'm going to talk about Quad really quickly. So over the course of a year and a half, TechSoup has had discussions. We put on events. We had interviews with 62 different food insecurity orgs. We talked about the things that you talk about data reporting, inventory management, volunteer management, data security, delivery of food, a lot of the different topics. And we asked them after the discussions with our 30 years of experience in the sector, with our resources and our connections, how can we help you make impact? And what they told us is they want a community space where they can talk with each other and uh, come up with solutions and answers to all the ills and challenges that they deal with daily. And they want products, of course, to help facilitate those answers that come out of the community. And they want courses and training to help with tech adoption, which is a big issue. And so we created Quad. Essentially, Quad brings all those learnings into one place. It brings the courses, it brings the products, it brings the discussions together. Okay, I'm gonna show you what uh, it actually looks like. So a Quad membership is $200 for a year. That $200 was put together by the average annual spend of our TechSoup members. But the value is so much more, and I'll show you how and what that means too. So initially, I mentioned a, a community space. We have a new dedicated community space, which includes a curated knowledge base. Our digital content team is working hard to make members only unique information added to the space. That includes articles, and it will include events, guest speakers, presentations, a lot of different things that we feel uh, will answer a lot of the questions that came up out of the discussions from a year and a half. Uh, aside from having that community space with the Quad membership, you also get products and services in courses. We will remove the admin fees for all of that. That means mostly you will get all the courses you need. I will say this, you can get a limit of 10 for courses and product quantities as well. But Overall, you will still get admin fees removed. And I can explain a little more if we have some Q&A about that. And I will be here with individualized support. When you do a quad membership, I'll first start out with a consultation with you so I can get a profile of what your needs are for the whole year when it comes to technology and other challenges. That way I can offer suggestions for different products. I'll place a request for you. If there are some unique and interesting topics that come up in the conversations in the community space that I think are relevant to you, I will tag you in it. I'll make sure it's there. I want you to get the value of this membership to the full effect. So I'll be shadowing where I can and when I can to make sure you get all you need. Okay. I think we are moving, uh, here we go. So I quickly wanna show you, this is a screenshot of what Quad looks like. It's probably a very familiar interface. To the left, we've got um, our content area, which includes the discussion areas of food insecurity and volunteer management. Those are the two biggest issues that came up in the conversations, volunteer tech adoption, uh, again, managing volunteers when it comes to uh, delivery services, especially in the era of COVID, a lot of, uh, food insecurity orgs had to transition from having people come to them to going to the people. So that has been an issue as well. Also to the left, you'll see we'll have events. We'll fill this out with all unique content specific to your quad membership. We also have an area where articles and resources where, again, our digital content team is working hard to add content there. In the middle, you'll see all the conversations that will have all the themes that we talked about throughout the course of the 1.5 years that we discussed uh, these topics with uh, these food insecurity orgs. And of course, to the right, you'll see the trending posts that will come up. And these topics are probably very familiar with to you. For instance, adding drop down lists to Excel. I will tell you this in the conversations we had, most of the organizations spoke about still either using pen and paper for registrants 
or dealing with Excel. With that in mind, we understand that there is a need to transition from older technologies to newer technologies. So we're hoping Quad will help do that and help facilitate uh, some of that tech adoption. Here's a screenshot of, as an example, of the articles and resources section that our digital content team is building out. And to give you a bigger example of kind of how we're trying to enhance the for the community space, if there are any unique and engaging conversations that come up from the space that have unique and really good answers to some issues that have, you guys are talking about, our content team will take that information and they'll repackage it. They'll either do an interview, maybe a video, video interview with people talking about these issues, or they might just pound the pavement and do some big research and create a, a more fulfilling article about the conversation conversations that came up. For instance, what kinds of organizations operate in food insecurity? From Amy, Excel templates for food security organizations, document management. These are all relevant conversations and uh, topics that we've created content for. So we're hoping that this space is going to be something more than just a forum. And we think that since it's brand new too, we feel that you all have the ability to create your own idea of what you want out of a forum. Your voice won't get lost in the shuffle your voice will be right there front and center. And to add to the ability for you to create impact and get discussions going, you can also, through the membership, add nine colleagues to the community space. So that can be your coworkers, board members, maybe colleagues from foundations or city governments that you're working with specifically for food insecurity. And then here is a list the current example list of some of our current quad members. You'll see it runs the spectrum in terms of food insecurity. We have food banks. We've got uh, community service organizations. We have churches that help deliver impact through providing food. We have platforms like Fresh Food Connect. We provide a platform that allows distribution of excess groceries and foodstuffs. So yeah, we have a big, we have a, a big or at least getting bigger group within the community space. And we hope you all can join as well. And again, I think a big deal out of this is to create your own space, have your colleagues in there, start conversations, introduce yourself to each other, and uh, come up with those answers that you mentioned you want to get out of the community space after a year and a half of discussions. All right, I am done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Only two years of pandemic and still I forget to unmute myself. <laughs> anyway, I'd love to open it up. We have a lot of questions that rolled in. I'll just start right now and we've got some time. So Allison, I'm going to start with the questions for Allison. How can charities use the map? How is it useful on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay. As I mentioned before, one of the things is just to have a network in your area and it's in there aren't a lot. If you're a part of the food bank network, then yeah, you might have a, a core group of people that you could go to, but certainly the ability to see where other food charities are and what potentially their needs are, it certainly allows for a sense of networking in your local area. Certainly Quad is offering a more, a more broad spectrum, but at the same time, the other nice thing about the map is that it allows you to, to be seen and for people to be able to host these kind of collections through Super Bowl of Caring that we encourage people to do and thousands do each year. Depending on the part of country you are in, our brand gets a lot of awareness. We're doing a lot more now with our NFL alumni, as you can see back here, who are also in the very um, beginnings of some pretty significant work that we're doing to bring awareness to child hunger and the needs around that um, in our communities. So stay tuned. Thanks. So I wanted to know if you could give me an example of how the data being used is helping us a positive story about the data. I could go back to some of the work that's being done right now where they're layering this data along with um, some other key indication indicators that help us identify better the vulnerabilities. One of the coolest things that it's been used for recently was it's layered in a dashboard where when natural disasters, particularly hurricanes, are taking place, and you've got Northern Command that ends up going in to help support with the Red Cross and with other national organizations, they're using the data um, about where these food charities are in order to, to see, here's the evacuation routes, 
here's where these charities are, here's who potentially could help us. And then in addition to that, it's just about getting resources quicker to the people in need. And, and based on the, the two times that it has been used and in the ways in which they're hoping to use it long term, they have taken the response time in at least one case down from three weeks to responding to certain communities that were in need of, of food to three days. So that's a good example of some of the things. Literally, like I said, right now, we're working with a couple of universities who are taking that data and they're using it to help figure out an algorithm that could be used really anywhere to, to know where to stage food, where it's most appropriate, where it's going to be best for the entire community. And you're using lots of factors to determine that. But there's never been a project really where we have all food charities in one database that's maintained. There's a lot of different databases out there. Google has one, but a lot of them are including feeding sites, like summer feeding sites, which is great information, but that's not someplace where a person like myself could go and get food support. In and addition, also a lot of them, the summer months, it's not open. So there's right. that too. Yeah. And a lot of the times they're not, the databases aren't maintained and no, ours is not perfect, but we are working on that every day. And we've got people who that's their job. They, we have volunteers, VISTAs who are working on that. And then we share that data. Our goal, what we would ideally like to see is just one database that everybody can share, that everybody who needs it. So for instance, we share our data with Hunger Free America and they have a hotline people can call when a food charity updates their information in our portal, that should update it for everyone who needs it. Instead of these charities having to go to 10 different places to update their information. So ideally that's what we'd like to see. Now, whether or not that will really happen or no, but, but our goal is to find all the food charities and we've got volunteers within our network, especially in our faith-based community and some civic groups that we work with a lot of youth who are helping us to find all food charities and try to get them on the map. So in all 50 states, we have some volunteers working on that. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I wanted to read a question from Brittany Rhodes, who's actually already a quad member. Brittany asks, would the Tackle Hunger Map be a good resource for unofficial organizations? Do they have to be 501c3s or can they be right. not nonprofits? But a lot of ours are, are being run through other organizations like a church or like a school. But yeah, those are fine as long as we have the ability to direct those resources to a location, so to speak. We just have to always be keeping in mind that these people are making donations through us to that charity. So we want to make sure that it's absolutely going to feed people. Okay, great. And our next, I'm going to conflate two questions into one. One question is, how can I add our food pantry to the Tackle Hunger map? And the next question says, we're thrilled to be on the map, but how do we edit the, the entry? How do we adjust the status? Okay, so two good questions. The first one I kind of answered already, you go to the map and you can either go to tacklehunger.org, which is our, our, our basic uh, website. You can go there and click into the map. And you can also read more about the map in there, but you can also just go to map.tacklehunger.org. You click on the contact button. There's a little place there where you can enter your details. Anyone can e enter details. So if you know of other food charities that aren't in there and they need to be, we want them to be, then you can add them too. And like I said, we've got a volunteer whose job is just to vet those, those charities and then approve them to get on the map itself. So that's how that happens. If you're already in the map, what, and you haven't received an email that says, hey, welcome to the map, click here to learn more, then you can email us at charities at superbowl.org, or we also have another one. Our sister email is soup, S-O-U-P, at superbowl.org. You can email either one of them and say, hey, I'm on the map, but I don't know the email address that's attached to it. Because the only way we can get in contact with our charities is if we have a good email address. And that's actually one of the jobs that we have a volunteer working on right now to make sure we have good email addresses for the charities who haven't engaged. So that's likely the issue. And once we have that correct email address that you want to use, it's easy to get in and then you can change the information 
you can also just email us and we can help you with that or call us. We've got a 1-800 number too that I can put in the chat. Great. So I, the, the next question is pretty interesting from Joe Bobrin. I've seen a number of similar but different maps in the works, all with slightly different purposes and audiences. Have you collaborated or spoken with other mapping projects? Do you think it would be valuable to create a basic standard API so these technology projects could easily share data? So like I'm thinking about Mapbox and there's some other projects. Well, how, how do you guys, are you doing that? Do you, are you thinking about a data standard and an open API in that way? Yeah, and we've, our IT developer who's to, who started this project absolutely is talking to some of these others. Ours has a very specific goal and our goal really from Super Bowl a carrying standpoint it's really to be an extension of our initial mission, which is to unite all communities to tackle hunger and have it, especially with the pandemic, have a virtual way to do that. And so because of that, ours is very unique compared to some of these food pantry finder apps, which are really great, but they're really designated just for the clients as opposed to the, the donors who want to help support the food charity. So we have ideas there, but yes, we are absolutely all about collaborating and sharing the data, sharing the, the work that we're doing, because it's all about feeding people when it comes right down to it. Yeah, I'm happy to introduce you actually to, I know some people at Mapbox, so I'm happy to make that introduction. If there's people in the audience who are related, like for example, if you, Joe, who asked the question are related to or have connections in that, feel free to put them in the chat or we can just make introductions afterwards. We'll, as we mentioned before, we'll be sharing all of this information in kind of a consolidated way and a follow-up email. I'm going to flip over to Aaron because we have so many questions and I want to make sure that um, we get the quad questions answered as well. Allison, if time permits, I'll ask the remaining. But for now, Aaron, so why is quad a membership program? What do you guys mean by that? And what would I get for the $200 fee that you mentioned? It's a one-year membership program, and it's like very similar to current models of technology that are happening, going transitioning through like subscription-based models through the cloud, that type of form of service. So yeah, we it is a one-year membership, two hundred dollars. The two hundred dollars is based off of the average annual spend, but like I said, you, the potential is so much more. We have a a course, one of our courses. I think it's a level three course for accidental techie development director. That's a three hundred and fifty dollar course, and with a cloud membership, you won't have to pay that. So automatically, if that's something, and we have heard that is something that people are very interested in, then that right there, you have gained a, a, a really relevant course and you've already paid back uh, the membership that you've uh, paid for. So if that is an example of kind of the impact you can get, but just, just to reiterate, it's the community space, it's the courses, it's the products, and it's the services as well. I, I touched on it a little bit. But I want to say it now again, which is there is a limit. There's like a 10 quantity limit for anything you get. Not all of our like product programs offer 10 like licenses. And all of our product offers are a little unique to each other. So what I'd recommend is that uh, if you're looking at a product, read the restrictions and uh, conditions involved. Just to make sure you look at that on the product page to make sure you're eligible. Most of quad members will be eligible because you're dealing with basic needs. And most of our corporate partners who offer these uh, programs uh, definitely offer them to basic needs. So that probably won't be a problem for most organizations, but it is something I'd recommend you check out if you're looking at a product page. Aside from the features and categories and everything else and details of the product, I recommend you definitely look at the restrictions and conditions section as well, just to make sure you're eligible. Next question from Brittany Rhodes again, who's a quad member. I'm on quad, but I'm not sure if my IT and other colleagues are connected. How can I best get them connected? I need Joe Hickey with me. So yeah. I guess Joe must be here in the event. So how, how do we get, how do, how do people get their colleagues onto quad? Just right here. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. I responded to, hi, Brittany. I responded to you in, in, in uh, the chat, which is in, that you saw it. So you, so with a quad membership, uh, there's the initial person that's on like the TechSoup account to place a request, and then you can add nine additional colleagues. So typically what happens is uh, you place a request, I send you a hello email, you get a fulfillment email that includes a, uh, a link for you to schedule time for a consultation. During the consultation and afterwards, I will send you a link to join Quad, 
and a link to provide your colleagues, the nine different colleagues. And we're really new to this too. We appreciate any feedback anyone's going to offer regarding improving or making changes anywhere that needs to have change. But what I, and I'm saying that because initially we had in mind just coworkers to be these nine additional people. But in our discussions, we realized that there are different stakeholders involved in a lot of these programs, aside from just the organization that is the primary organization. With that in mind, beyond coworkers, if there's someone relevant that you've been dealing with, that works at another organization, a third party that's helping you distribute food, feel free to include them and add them and use the link, send them the link and they can get added as well. We're just trying to make a space where real conversations with the right players happen so we can get some solutions, we can get some answers to a lot of the problems that we've uh, heard that have bubbled up in the conversations that we've had. Great. I'm going to um, pop back over to Allison and because ask some more questions that have been popping in. Here's another one. Are charities able to post types of food that are most helpful to their clientele, perhaps cultural, allergen, religious focus? And I'm going to add to that question, which is uh, to say, if an organization isn't specifically a food serving organization, like we heard from pet rescue orgs that also do food for pets and organizations that help with people who are unhoused, how do they fit into the map? Both good questions. And I had answered a couple of them in the, the chat to that person who had asked that. As far as the question of other orgs, we have, as long as an organization is feeding people, then they're in our map. So we have groups like the Refugee Services of Texas is on our map because they're feeding people all the time pet pantries for sure, if they're a soup kitchen for sure, because all of those traditionally are, are groups that would benefit from a Super Bowl occurring campaign. Our initial, our kind of heritage is that we encourage groups to have campaigns using the energy of the big game, really. Once they have that campaign, they're going to make that donation wherever they want to. So they get to determine in their community where they're, they want to provide that resource. And I was just telling the, the pet pantry, we've got several of them in our map that do really well because a lot of our schools really love to, to support those pet pantries. Interestingly, the other question that you asked with regard to adding what kind of donations they're looking for, mm -hmm. we actually do ask some of those questions and it's in the database that we have. So when you log into the portal, then that's where a food charity can indicate, change up the information, if their addresses are changed or their times of service, that sort of thing. And most of right now, because our primary mission has been to provide donations and to, to support that charity. So we don't want to overwhelm the user. We haven't really put that into the view on our map. But like I said, we share that information with a lot of our pantry finders and yeah, they do have a lot of that information. We are working on that. And we, we see what the feedback from our food pantries, just like with Quad, you want that information so that um, you can do better. And we're actually about to deploy a second version, which will add some of that. Here's what we need. We're, we're needing food donations and this kind of food donations. So stay tuned. It's coming. <laughs> With that, we have to wrap. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but it was such a pleasure meeting all of you. And thanks so much for all of your insights in the chat. And I loved finding out where people were from and what they did. And yay, I'm glad. Oh, Susan, you reached out yesterday from Humanitas. Ah, thank you, Daniel. I, I did see that email and I am delayed in responding. So apologies. I'm terrible with email sometimes, but I will get back to you. And um, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, we'll have these every other week. If you are interested, you can email community at TechSoup or Susan at TechSoup, and we will be happy to tell you more. And thanks again and have a wonderful weekend.